Welcome, welcome back to A Drop of Happy, where we focus on carefree, stress well, light and lively living while reviewing and discussing all things entertainment and wellness. And I am ready to talk about The Recruit. Season two has a release date and I am super excited to talk about it not the release date the release date is January 30th 2025 and I watched the recruit a while back but I needed to get caught up I needed to remember because it's been a minute because it was released in 2022 but that's not when I watched it but I am ready to watch season two i'm i am all caught up and ready to go basically the recruit stars um the guy from uh kissing no no not kissing booth oh, shoot what the heck he played in um to all the boys i loved before to all the boys i p.s something the boys hold up let me find out yes noah Centineo, he was into all the boys I loved before, which I enjoyed. Really, really cute. Um, but it stars him. It stars Laura Haddock as Max Meladazi, um, Fivo Stewart as Hannah, mm, who mm, mm, annoyed the living daylights out of me. But and a whole bunch of other people. But we're gonna talk about them separately but just to get a gist of what it's about um it's basically about this lawyer who is a lawyer for the cia so he's not like a cia agent he's just a lawyer who works for the cia and basically he gets like grunt work but the grunt work turns out to be a major big deal because there's this thing called gray mail, which is where people threaten to release CIA secrets and then they got to handle it. So he got this really big case from Max, who was a former agent or she was a former operative. She was a former asset because she wasn't really like an official agent. Anyway, she gets screwed. She gets screwed really bad um, overseas and they leave her out to dry and she gets herself in a situation a bad situation but really she was like protecting somebody she gets herself in a bad situation and she kills somebody because she's a killer let's face it she's a killer and she's trying to lay low in the u.s after they leave her hanging out to dry after this this mission goes bad um and she comes to the U.S. and she's just like waiting for them to call her, whatever, whatever. And they don't ever call her. So she ends up fending for herself, doing what she has to do. But what happens is she kills somebody who beat up somebody who came through her safe house because she ran safe houses. So she was running her own little uh, uh, business, not legitimate business, but she was running like a little scam business where she had like safe houses and somebody was coming through there broke the rules brought this guy over beat the living crap out of her till she almost died so then max saw her this is one of the episodes max saw the guy and beat the crap out of the guy then the guy came back after her and then she killed him so then she ended up in jail for killing him so this is why she's sending the gray mail because she's like if y'all don't get me out of jail if y'all don't get me out of jail i'm dropping all the secrets so owen who is played by Noah Centineo, gets the gray mail, thought it was going to be grunt work, but it ends up being a whole drama, having him all going all over the world um, to try to solve this case, having him get in contact with all these like people up to the chief of staff. Like It's just a whole mess. Is it worth watching? Yes, it's worth watching. It's enjoyable. I actually liked it, but I think I might be a little biased because I kind of liked him 
from to all the girls, to all the boys I loved before. So it was fun to watch and I like, you know, spy, espionage, all that stuff. So I really enjoyed it. His character, I actually didn't mind. I mean, he was kind of annoying because he was an idiot. Not so much an idiot, but he just did things and didn't think about it. Just kind of flew by the seat of his pants, got himself into trouble, and just ran with it. That was that was him. And ultimately, um, obviously, he's alive because there's a season two. But he kept on getting into these weird situations. He was like the Forrest Gump of CIA lawyering. But I didn't mind it because, you know, that's how the story continues. So I actually liked him and enjoyed him. He, um, his acting was pretty good. He, he's a pretty good actor. I mean, it wasn't nothing deep or anything like that. But his acting was, was pretty good. And I enjoyed the character. And he was just kind of like, Psh, it's whatever. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants, which was kind of like the baseline of his character. Now, let's talk about Max. So Max is, I mentioned before, she's the one that's doing the gray mail. So basically she was an asset, not an instance or a secret agent. Like I said, was Russian spy, double agent, whatever, doing some stuff, got busted, got hung out to dry by the people who was supposed to be her handler but I think it was like not really official and they didn't, that we'll find out about that later. But again, she was putting pressure on him. She had a lot of things going on. She was a user. At the end of the day, she was for self. She was protecting herself most of the time, except when she killed that guy for beating up her friend which maybe they were more than friends I don't know was given a little bit more than friends and I think her friend's name was Cora who ended up in jail as well um and they kind of ended up in the same jail while she was trying to get out anyway she gave Owen a really hard time I liked her character I enjoyed her um I never really found her too like annoying she was just but you knew you couldn't trust her couldn't trust her at all because she was all for self and spoiler um she had a daughter that she kept on talking about and she told owen that the daughter died and stuff like that but come to find out come to find out the daughter didn't die at all and the daughter if you've seen it if you haven't seen it, don't listen to me because this is going to be a spoiler. The daughter possibly maybe ended up killing her all the way towards the last episode of season one. Possibly maybe ended up killing her. I don't know if she died for real, for real or not because it ended. But. The daughter ended up, kept, the daughter caused a lot of havoc because they had missions when they went back to Geneva and the daughter kind of messed up those missions, um, killed Zandagoy, which was supposed to be her handler and she went back involved with him. So if you saw it, you know, you know, um, but she was not to be trusted. And then she did have sex with Owen, but I really believe that she only had sex with him so that she can have some leverage against him because it's all about leverage and information it is very cutthroat very cutthroat you could you as a matter of fact you can't trust a soul because everybody is just out for self that's one thing to just protect yourself and poor owen his problem was he really thought people was like trying to help him for real he was the epitome of naive and stupid and dumb yeah and yet he still kept on like getting out of these sticky situations and being successful. Okay, so I'm going to hop to another character that I really liked. And that is 
Amelia Sal Salazar, 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 something like that. But Amelia is played by mm, Kayla Xander, and she's cute. She's no, she's not. She's sexy. It's something about her that I really like. And I think what I liked about her was that she was, she seemed hella loyal. Like, like she had her head on amidst all the shady people because there's a lot of shady people. Like, even though she was only talking to, I don't know, she wasn't even talking. I don't even think she was talking. So how her and Owen got together was, um, he needed some information and we're going to get to Violet and Lester. Violet and Lester was like, okay, we can give them a little, we can kind of give them a little uh, leeway because they were against him the whole time. Their fellow lawyers that worked for um, the CIA against Owen the whole time as the new guy, basically like hazing him. So they were like, oh, let him get with Amelia. Amelia's kind of like, Mm. like she gets what she wants and they already knew oh he's fresh meat Amelia's gonna want that like want that if you know what I'm saying want that um but she did get with him they hooked up a couple of times they went on a couple of dates and hooked up one time but even though like she always had his back so she must have really liked him or what have you or she's just that type of girl who is like y'all not gonna do anything shady so there was like she wouldn't give incriminating information to um violet and lester she was real tight-lipped like to me amelia was a girl's girl amelia was like she's a type that i would want as my friend she would be my work buddy at that job because she was hella cool, she was straight up, she wasn't about, she was no nonsense, she knew what she wanted, but most of all, like, she's probably the only person that actually had his back, for real, for real, at the job, so I really liked her, they actually ended up, she ended up breaking up with him, not that they were really together, but she sort of kind of ended up breaking up with him, which I don't blame her because he's a little reckless and she's about her career and about her life. And she's like, oh, you're not going to take me down. You're not going to take me down, sir. So I kind of like that as well. So I didn't mind, but I kind of wanted them to stay together to see, you know, what's going to happen. I'd like them to be like a little like a uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith type situation. But that didn't happen, but I liked her, nevertheless. Okay, now let's talk about thing one and thing two. Lester and Violet Ebner. So they were also attorneys that worked at the uh, uh, CIA. And they'd been there for a little while. I don't know how long they'd been there, but they'd been in the business for a while. Then they finally switched to being attorneys for um, the CIA. And Owen was like new, fresh meat. Again, it is every man for himself, except they got each other's back. Violet and Lester has each other's back because they used to know each other from before. And I think Violet worked there first and then Lester used to be a field op and then became a lawyer and came to work there because he didn't want to work in the field anymore. Cool, cool, cool. So they had each other's back. But they kind of were hazing Owen and just giving him a hard time all around. And never at any point in time did they give him any slack. And it was always like whatever he did, it didn't matter. They were against him. Until, until Lester got himself into a little, a little situation where one of his, one of the ops out there, which was a problem because the op, well, he used to work with him. I'm not going to say that, that was his boy, but he used to work with him. Well, he needed to pay child support and this was a lawyer problem and 
he wasn't paying his child support and the wife was like like you need to get this dude to pay child support so then it became lester's problem to the point and lester wasn't getting it done to the point where lester's boss was like oh you need to go overseas wherever this man is and walter nyland who's like the director you need to go wherever this man is to get him to 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 sign the document so they can garnish his wages so he can give that child support and then nylon who's the boss assigned owen to go with him so they go all the way overseas and i think they kind of bonded during that time although lester doesn't want to admit it they did kind of bond through that time because owen is really the reason why the crazy dude ended up uh signing the divorce papers but while they were over there while they were overseas they kind of bonded i say all this to say lester was kind of warming up to him but old girl violet was like no we need to we need to basically keep throwing him under the bus keep dogging him not helping him out whatever whatever and lester wasn't always like down with it but eventually the other thing i liked about lester is he was kind of like all right i'm down for whatever like because they had to go overseas so uh they sent owen overseas because they were uh, uh re trying to plug max back it, it's a whole plot it's a whole and I'm, I'm not doing it justice but just know they went overseas um to clandestinely i'm making that word up back up owen but not really back up owen basically to be there if he jacks up they they'll clean up clean up the mess to protect the office okay and then what happens is a whole mess happened people died just just a mess and then he has to put the lester has to put back on his field ops hat like his actual cia field ops hat um but again after him and and owen had that little moment I, he kind of warmed up to me but he's loyal to violet and violet is shady af and both of them was getting on my nerves at one point him less so he would be like thing two and violet was like thing one because she was getting on my nerves i i was i, I was not feeling her and i'm like well how long is this hazing gonna go like how 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 long are y'all gonna keep keep this up? Meanwhile, Owen is just still doing stupid shit, but he's also the good thing about it is he's also like showing some instances where he's actually human and not just this crazy person because he's having some anxiety attacks and he's just like oh my gosh this this I'm I'm really messing up like I need help. Um, and so he is trying to reach out like and he's just a nice guy but getting taken advantage of especially by those two and like i said getting hazed and all this all, all sorts of mess so the roommates are hannah and terrence and i'm gonna start off with terrence terrence is uh the gay nice sweet black dude who is just looking for love but not finding it but has these two wonderful roommates and has their backs and he is like the sense of reason he seems to like have his head together he's like the good you know if there's like the the the, the devil and the angel he's like the the voice of the angel like sensible he tries to give good advice to Hannah. Be like, leave that boy alone. Why? Because Hannah likes him, right? So just quick background. Hannah used to go out with him and now they're roommates. Used to go out with Owen and now they're roommates. So now they're all friends, went to college together, all that good stuff, and now they're roommates. Again, he is the voice of reason for Hannah and the voice of reason for Noah not knowing that's his real name for owen <laughs> he's the voice of reason for owen and i like him and he makes sense 
but that 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 chick Hannah, she's like dumb, dumb, annoying. I don't understand her because let me tell you. So you know he went for the CIA. Like he may not be a CIA agent trained operative, but he's a lawyer for the CIA. She she does stupid ass shit. Okay? She asks stupid ass questions. She goes, Wait, where are you going? What you doing? Da 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 da. You gonna be hurt? Blah blah blah. He can't tell you, Hannah. He can't tell you. He can't tell you what he's doing. He can't tell you where he's going. He can't tell you. Okay? But this takes the cake. So he goes overseas on a secret mission. Or on a mission, because it's all secret. Hannah's a little rich girl. She's a little rich girl. And if they met for us to hate her, we hate her. I hate her. She's a little rich girl. And she got that rich girl privilege. Not to mention she does some shady-ish to her boyfriend. Because her family's shady. But you know when you got money. And they're lobbyists. So they're connected. This is important. This is key. Because she goes overseas. She follows this dude overseas. Owen goes on a mission. She's like, Owen needs our help. And drags poor little old Terrence. And Terrence is like, well, shoot. First class ticket? She's like, Terrence, I got his first class ticket to go to Geneva to help this boy out. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, Hannah? What? Ma'am. Like, you don't, don't, don't you watch enough television shows to know that this is not a good idea? But... She's like secretly still in love with him and yada, yada, yada. And her mom is and her mom. And, and even Terrence is just like, don't let this boy derail you. But I don't know why they blaming Owen. Owen is minding his business. If she's, here's the thing. We have control over, over how we let somebody be involved in our lives. Right? And they're like, oh, I'm not going to let him derail, derail you anymore. No. Hannah is derailing her damn self. Because there's no reason for her to be traipsing overseas to go help somebody who works for the CIA, who's in a mission, who's on a mission. Please tell me what sense does that make. Right? So nobody's derailing her but herself. She's lost. She's confused. She is in love with this boy. They're not together. Probably rightfully so because he is all over the place. You don't need to be with him. Like, you you can't tame him, so don't be with him. Rest in your decision not to be with him. It's okay, boo-boo. But no. So, she goes overseas. She drags poor Terrence with him, with her. Okay, he, he... willingly goes admittedly he willingly goes right um but i would too just a first class ticket i would too you know he's just gonna run you know what i'm saying who's not going to go i accidentally played it i would go too so but the thing is when she when she gets over there like you don't think you might get killed something might happen it's dangerous, so it's not dangerous for you. So then she calls her mama and then, and like, oh my God, something happened to Owen. Like, please find out. What are you doing? Because if he's like on a mission or doing something, why do you think it's okay to, to jeopardize whatever he's doing? I just don't. It's that privilege. It's that privilege. It's that money. You got so much money. So you just think your money just allows you to do whatever you want to do. And you don't think. You don't think about the consequences. You don't think about anybody else. So then Owen gets in trouble because they're like, yo, why? Why? And you know, her her family, like, they're high up there. So they got access to the chief of mother flipping staff. To the president. So he's like to to Owen's boss, to Nylon, why you got why why are these people calling me about this kid? 
not a care. She don't have a care, a clue, or whatever. She just, let me just, and she's so condescending, and she's so annoying, and she's so, why is she in, the, what, what is her purpose? Then she goes over there, right, and then, tw- I think it's the last episode, so Owen, he, go, he he's gone through a lot now. Last episode, he's gone through a lot. He's killed some people. Clearly never held a gun before. He's killed some people. He's done some things. He's done some things, okay? He's gone through some things. He's done some things. He's a little shook up, and he's like, I'm done. I'm out. A finito. So he calls her because, you know, he loves her too. Let's be for real. He calls her because, but she, st- she doesn't go. Her mama tells her, get your ass on a plane, get back home. She doesn't go. Oh, I'm going to figure out my life. And then Terrence was like, well, I'm out. Deuces. Boop. He's like, privilege. I would have stayed a little bit longer. Maybe a few more days. See the, see the city. See the country. Whatever, Terrence. But he's like, I'm out. And she's like, well, I'm staying. For what? Well, I'm going to figure it out. Privilege has its privilege. They said it. Not me. It was a quote. Privilege has its privileges. Yes. She stays. So then Owen calls her. And he's like, she's like, I'm in Prague too. Because now they're in Prague. And he goes to meet her. Well, he goes to meet her. Car pulls up, snatches him up right in front of her. And she she lucky she didn't get shot. She lucky she didn't die. Because her ass should have been on a plane going back. She lucky she did not die. Okay? But fine. And that's that's how that part ends. And then you see Owen with, with Mishka. Mishka, whatever her name is, which is Max's daughter. And Max's daughter shoots Max. And then Owen. But we don't know. This is the setup for season two. So what's going to happen? I don't know. Is Max dead? I don't know. Don't know what's going to happen, but I'm ready for season two. And that's that. So if you haven't seen it, please watch it. If you have, let's talk about it. Um, Because it was a good watch. And so ready for season two. um, Because I... It's a cliffhanger for sure. And I had to watch it again so I could be, because or else I wouldn't, by the time January came around, I I wouldn't have remembered because I watched it so long ago. But I am ready to see what shenanigans Owens is going to get himself into because there's a lot of like loose ends. Oh, there's there's the one chick that I didn't get to talk about. What is her name? Um, Dawn. Dawn. She... Oh, she's annoying too. She's annoying too because so Dawn uh, is a CIA agent in the field and she's kind of Owen's first contact with like the real, real. She pulls his finger off because she doesn't, she's, she's too aggressive. She's so aggressive. She don't know him, whatever, but she's protecting herself. She's in the field because I guess they are a little crazy in the field, it seems like. I don't know how Lester came back and he was okay. But Dawn is like, she, she, she she the truth. She the truth. So at the end, she's left in the wing. But Xander's dead. He was another CIA, but he was like on the rise. Uh, um... Max kind of held had him out to dry and he got killed because he was doing some shady stuff sleeping with somebody's wife that he wasn't supposed to be sleeping with but Dawn is left standing um I don't know what's gonna happen with that so there's a lot of loot there's a lot of loose ends that they have a lot of questions to be answered in season two that I am here for again that will be January 30th, 2025. So a little over, little maybe a couple months, like a month, close to two months. If you haven't seen it, you have a chance. Definitely bingeable. I think it's like 10 episodes. No, not 10 episodes. It's it's eight episodes. Um, and it's 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 not a bad, it's not a bad watch. They're almost an hour-ish, give or take. Um but you can binge. It's definitely, definitely bingeable. So check it out. If you like what you heard, please share, like, come back. Uh, 
A Drop of Happy is available on all streaming platforms, lightv.com, L-I-T-E-V-I.com, all uh, social media at lightv, and uh, the blog is lightv.com. And remember to live life and stress well.